Can go first. You, you are. How do you get someone who doesn't want their photo taken say, "Yeah, you can take my photo"? Mm -hmm. um, look natural. Yeah. So that's. I, okay, so I have about 15 minutes to get married to this person. So right away, it's what are they about? It's read them and give them something that they're, they are comfortable with. So you, you shake their hand and on contact, you are, you've got to be their friend. You've got to be someone that they, they can trust. And then from there, you just go back and forth and you do as much marrying as possible so you can build that trust. So if they're shy, then you be shy. If they lower their voice, then you lower your voice. If they're really up and exuberant, then you're really up and exuberant. If they're like, if it's, I don't know, slipknot, and they're just like in your face, and you're like uh, in your face, you just rise to that occasion because you don't have that much time. Um, if, it's, if it's a slow coax, then, then sometimes you talk about stuff that they might want. You know, if it's somebody at work that's really, really interesting with for, with for you, and you really want to shoot them, and you have this great idea, and you found this great prom dress, and you want to take them to the forest and have them wear the prom dress with their combat boots, but they keep saying no, then you find a way to do it on their terms. And um, you find a way to, because everybody wants something out of it, out of pictures these days. So somewhere in there, there's, got to be a connection. You've got to find that connection. So can you give us an example? Like, you're saying that everybody wants something out of the picture. If I'm uh, someone you want to photograph for whatever reason, what are the kind of things that people want? That, that to me is a little confusing. OK, so I'm going to ask you, you know what, you have a such, I'm going to tell you why and where I'm coming from. You have a, such a great face. You have um, this really strong face. You have a very present personality. I'd love to take your picture sometime. So I'm telling them what I'm finding interesting about them. And then they might shut me down. No, I don't have a good face. No, I hate getting my picture taken. My mom always made me sit in front of the camera and smile since I was three years old and I hate it. <laughs> right? Okay, so then I'm like, this isn't gonna be like that. We'll do something you like to do. Would you like some pictures of, what do you like to do? Oh, I really like riding my horse. Okay, well maybe what we can do is we can go out and I can meet your horse. I love horses, I used to have horses. I can usually find something in common with just about anybody. You know, even if it's, even if I never had horses, I just saw horses on TV and they were like fascinating animals and I'd love to see one in person, right? So you're like doing me this favor. And I would love to meet your horse and if, that's, if it's okay, I'll bring my camera, I'll just snap a few shots, I won't be in your way. I swear I won't tell you to look at the camera and smile. I swear I will not do what your mother did to you. It'll be fun. I always end with, it'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? They always leave and they always go, that was really fun. And I always go, right? <laughs> and that's, that's my spiel. <laughs> and then if they say, no, 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 I'm just too skinny, I'm just too shy, and I, I leave it, and I just, I usually get my shot. It's like hunting. You guys, I mean, most of you guys are like nature photographers, right? You just sit and wait for that damn owl. <laughs> <laughs> I know all about these owls. I'm really good friends with Donald Quintana. Do you guys know Donald? And he just gets the most amazing shots. Well, what he does with birds and knowing where, when they're on, off of 41 is what I used to do with people. I would just, I would hunt them. I would go, okay, they go to... The Viper Room, every Friday night, at two, after 2 a.m., I will be there. And I will call my people. Who do you know? Do you know the doorman at the Viper Room? They won't let me in. Yeah, I'll make a phone call. And that's what I would do for my pictures. <laughs> you work for them. Yeah, it's like hunting. I have two questions. Okay. First is, do you really not take people pictures anymore? And the second one is, do you miss Hollywood? <sighs> So I just went down to Hollywood like last weekend. I don't know, do I miss it? I don't think I miss it. I don't think I miss it. And it was funny because I like show up all like dressed up like the 90s and everybody else is in like tennis shoes and jeans. I'm like, wow, the red carpet's really changed since I was here. Um, <laughs> but you just take it with a, a grain of salt. Um, 
I was so exhausted by the time I left Hollywood. I was so tired that I squeezed every little ounce that I wanted out of it. Um, would I go back down there on a project if it would help somebody? Yeah. Um, do I, am I still involved in film making now? Yeah. Um, because it helps other people, because I want it to benefit other people. And, and then your other part of your question, yeah, I still shoot people. Usually um, somebody, oh, is Lily here? Oh, Lily didn't come. Lily's one of my students. So if I have a student that wants to hang out with me and wants some old broad to teach her how to use a camera and go old school with film, then we'll, we'll get a model and we'll shoot. Or people call me and go, hey, I'm, sh you know, I'm shoot my wedding and shoot my baby shower. And I still, I still get all that stuff. I just don't pump it. But yeah, they're people. They're my people. I love shooting people. Love shooting people. It's my thing. My question was going to be if um, you had other work that was also based on, on this extemporaneous sort of approach uh, that would be street photography, people you don't know, and so forth. But it seems like you've really explained how, how much you get from the subject yeah. and what it is about them. Yeah. Is there also something in the street that, yeah. that you really There's you a lot of street photography. In a different way? Do I handle it a different way? Well, that's, you know, that's the question. I don't know. So my street photography was kind of on the sets of TV and films, but they were on the streets too. So I always had a little Pentax point and shoot with really good film in it. And it was a decent lens. How am I doing on time, boss? Doing okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't have a clock to gauge myself, so you guys have to help me out. Um, and nobody's leaving or falling asleep, so I was expecting a mad rush to the door. Um, so my street photography is like really interesting still shots. And then from those shots, I got jobs working on the sets of TVs and movies as a still photographer. Um, my photo partner, we met on the set um, of The Crow 2. And he came up to me and he put the camera in my face and wanting to, I was trying to get a better part in the movie, so wanting to impress him and separate myself from all the other extras, I said something rather intelligent, I thought. I said, you have flare in your lens. Now what extra knows flare in your lens? So he like checks his, his shading and um, he's like, no, it's fine. I'm like, no, it's okay, whatever. And then we start bantering. And... Um, that kind of, I showed him my street photography, right? And he was like, wow, this is really amazing. It's like you tell a really good story. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I have like friends scoring drugs. Um, you know, interesting, like that life stuff that was like, I can't believe I'm like witnessing this. You know what I mean? Um, but I always had my camera on me, like every, everybody else now does. I've always had something up my sleeve or in my pocket. Yeah. Yeah. Did I answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Question. So you told us how you handle people who don't want to have their photo taken. Uh huh. How do you handle people who really want you to take their photo? Yeah. So, so this is like maybe it's a model who just wants to get up there and do their own little act. Uh -huh. Can you mold is there, it? Is their act want? any good? There's <laughs> <laughs> a lot of models that want to get up and do their act. They're, they don't have a good act. And they don't want me to lead them. So what I try to do is I try to give them some space on the stage to let them like burn out some of their batteries. <laughs> and then I try to go, do you want some help? Or do you want, can we take off some of the edges here? And then we can um, start, I can start teaching them, which is part of like what really brings me joy, is teaching um, people how to be in front of the camera that might not have a lot of experience. Now, if they're like really, really, really amazing models, and we just go hard, you know, and I'll just start coming up with ideas of who are we going to sell these to, and then I go to the marketing level. So... If somebody really, really wants me to take their picture, my first question is, and it's not a model, so I already addressed the modeling thing, I say, what do you want the picture for? 
Well, it's for my... Okay, here, I'm doing a lot of these now. Um, my dating site. I'm getting a lot of swipe lefts. I need more swipe rights. Okay, fine. Well, stop taking selfies where your head fills the frame. That's the first point. So now we're like, okay, what kind of girl are you looking for? What kind of guy are you? Let's establish your market. Um, so this is where you're being married, being with the, um, the screenwriter. He was also an ad man in St. Louis. He had his own ad agency. So what he always taught me was know your market, know your market, know your market. So that's what I tell people. Okay, what's it for? Is it for grandma in the rest home where she just has this much space on her shelf and we need something small and cute that she can like carry in her bro pocket because that's really legit around here. Or is it for, do you want like a nice portfolio? Do you want dates? Do you, what are we doing? What's, what's, what bait do we need, right? Um, and I know you can't do that with owls because it's not legit. <laughs> um, so that's where I go with that. Then it's, let's find your best side. So um, I work with like, some of these great men that are just coming out of divorce, they're insecure, they don't want to start dating again, and I'm like, what are you talking about? You're great. We just have to like put it out there who you are. Um, because when your face is this close, it doesn't look like you give a shit. Like, <laughs> let's show them that you care. Really? Yeah. <laughs> like, why don't you... It's like, okay, newsflash, girls like guys that take care of themselves. Um, so, why don't you iron your shirt? I haven't gone shopping in 14 years. Okay, why don't you go shopping and buy some clothes from this century? We just start, I start helping them out with their self-esteem. You know, then they want to be in front of the picture. Then they're like, oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, where's my people? Where's my camera? And they're ready, right? We've, we've made some, I do the same thing with women and their portraits, or a lot of women, I do boudoir photography. Especially, I like doing older women, because they're like, no, 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 I don't want to put a bikini on, I'm not 18 anymore, and like, right, so let's own that. Let's do something that's flattering, let's put some nice colors on you, let's put some good, some good fabric that drapes and hangs, it makes you feel good, because when you feel good, you're going to look good in front of the camera. And here's the thing about where acting and um, photography really, really tie in. How many of you have seen a really bad movie? Okay. Only a few of you. Okay, so the contents of a really bad movie is really bad acting. Really bad acting comes from actors who don't believe it. They're not buying it. They have to buy in. When they buy in, I buy in as the audience. The camera does not lie. Whether it's still or whether it's moving, whether it's video, whether it's on your phone, it does not lie. If you're a jerk, it's going to come out on your video. If you're insecure, it's going to come out in your pictures. So let's do some prep work. Let's get you to that point of who you are, of the best you. Being happy, like the, the hypothetical idea of the person and their horse. That horse is her happy place. Let's take them where they're happy. Okay, a professional model, I will have them shoot a bikini shoot at 5 or 6 in the morning because they're getting paid $1,200 an hour or a day. But somebody else that isn't, that I'm not going to ask them to get up at 2 in the morning because they're not going to be happy and it's going to show up on my film. I, I am going to do everything I can to, to build that connection of honesty. And I'll be funny, I'll put on music, I'll bring wine, champagne, that's, I cut it off there now. Um, <laughs> there used to be a lot more options when I lived in LA. Um, I had a big photo studio, I had a big loft in downtown LA, it was a great place to party. And so we could bring everybody home after the movie wrap, and we could take pictures, bust out the lights, turn up the music, um, and we could get lots of people having fun. Um, similar thing with if people hired me and they were really, really camera shy, yeah, I would cheat and use some champagne or some coffee. Some people just want to go up, some people want to go down. Um, yeah, as long as it's legit, no fake shit. Don't do middle class, don't do middle class, it's got to be real.